welcome back. Today we're working on a DIY ribbon mic. This is a handheld retrofit. So we're pretty much gonna use these materials you see in front of us, some aluminum channel, some strong quarter inch magnets. This, uh, this is gonna be a small mic element. Um, this is the, the mic I've chosen to mod. Some tweezers, kind of essential, a sharp X-Acto blade some screws, copper tape, acrylic, and the all-important aluminum. Dig in. So I'm just going to disassemble this mic and um, I'm just going to use these same cables. We'll get back to that in a second. This is the chassis. Just one chunk of um, aluminum channel. It's quarter inch. Interior dimension so it fits the magnets perfectly. But I need it to be small enough to fit the magnets and the ribbon element and also fit inside that microphone. So I'm cutting it way down. You also see me sanding quite a bit. That's really just to deburr everything maybe get things as flat and straight as possible. You can see that magnet fits in there perfectly right in the channel. We got our work music. So I'm also cutting off these little ears so that there's a place for the rest of the chassis to fit and also to allow the clamps to clamp down on the ribbon mic. Another thing I'd like to mention is I have I really tried to make this with just hand tools that you could use at your desk. So um, a little razor saw, hand drill, um, and these pliers that kind of do the, the rest of the work for the, uh, the razor saw. And also I'm using sandpaper a lot. If you have a nice set of files, by all means use your files. So those are basically the chassis mounts for the magnets. This is going to be the, the acrylic for the rest of the chassis. I'm using basswood to uh, measure this piece of acrylic. I know that the basswood is um, about a quarter of an inch and that's pretty much the size that um, I want the acrylic pieces to be. It's not critical because you can always sand it down after, which is what I'm doing here. And then once you get the mic element itself assembled, you can always sand down the acrylic on that as well. I'm sanding both sides of the um, acrylic here to give something for the uh, super glue to adhere to. Anytime you're going to braid a smooth surface for glue to stick better, mostly that it's a good thing. kind of measure the interior dimension of the channels as it is. I know that that um, piece of basswood is a quarter inch between those magnets, so that sets my ribbon um, width perfectly. Now I'm just finishing the chassis with this acrylic. So I also use um, strong alcohol pads to clean everything before I glue. And um, so I've done that here and I've glued this. And uh, I realized that I need to abrade this surface as well. So while the glue is still wet, I quickly abrade that. I also don't like to sand magnets because I don't want to create any uh, magnet dust. That could be a problem. So I just give some light scratches off any extra glue squeeze out and do the other side. Abrade the inside. And of course, um, I would change my X-Acto blade before cutting up the ribbon if I was using the same knife blade for my ribbon. 
because that once you once you upgrade the aluminum and the magnet, that that plate is shot. Cleaned up the edges here with alcohol, more super glue, and this is sped up about four times. Um, so it looks like there's plus the editing of taking out timing. I'm letting the glue cure between between uh, joints. Although you can't tell in the video. So a nice clean fresh blade cutting up this copper and again no drill press or anything just a real quick drill, hand drill. Uh, if you have drill press of course use it. And if you are not accustomed to cutting acrylic, um, be very careful with this step. Acrylic chips very easily and suddenly you're uh, scraping glue trying to get a new chassis put together. This is that copper sticky tape. It's sticky on one side and um, it's dead soft copper tape so you can get it in there and uh, it'll stick to itself. But I usually like to go back and solder it together to get the joints nice and uh, electrically connective. So this is, these are the contacts that the ribbon corrugation will sit between. And then I also use the same tape to uh, create the shield that will um, create a humbucking effect for the rest of the, the ribbon itself. A couple little clamps made out of that same acrylic material and drilled. Here's that shield, humbucking shield I was talking about. That will sit around the outside of the chassis. It's okay if it conducts with the aluminum, but you don't want it to conduct with that other conductor. So here we are. I know that that blade is fresh and that piece of balsa wood I used is exactly a quarter inch, so the, the exact size I want for that ribbon. My little corrugating machine. And now the fun part. I'm gonna lay this ribbon in here, clamp one end, and then stretch it. Blowing on it lightly to stretch it. So you can see this a pretty small element. These um, these quarter inch magnets are only a half inch long and a quarter inch thick so you get a, a pretty cool little handheld mic with a decent output and uh, a great sound so I'm clamping one end now I'm going to stretch this a little more and you'll see me blow on it one more time just to get it you know properly stretched you can get you can spend as much time as you want um, getting your ribbon as wide and as close to the magnets. The closer you get it to the magnets, the, the higher output you'll have and most likely the, the better sounding mic you'll have. But that's basically the finished product here. Come back to my reusable parts. Little transformer. Solder together my contacts. and then make sure that shield is elect electrically conductive to the other contact. Solder in my leads. And then I'll hook this up with the transformer as well. Again, most of this video is sped up about four times as fast as normal. Um, plus uh, any of the little tool grabbing moments are edited out but um, I thought, I was like, wow, these are really fast solder, solder joints. And then I realized, oh yeah, right, this has been sped up really quickly. Not that they should be long, but um, it sort of makes it look like I'm not giving any attention to the joint, uh, when in fact I am. 
I like to use shrink wrap on these, um, and certainly if you're going to send a mic out into the world, shrink wrap these. But I'm using vinyl tape for today's purposes. And you could certainly do the next step first, uh, which is, you'll see I'll add a screen to all this. And uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's better to do before you assemble. Might make your mic a little, a little safer so you don't blow the ribbon before you get it in. So you want to hear this mic in action, I've got it right here. Uh, I recorded a guitar track. This is a Strat going into a, a 5e3 Deluxe amp. And uh, that's this mic pointed directly on axis with the speaker. And then the same mic over top of a uh, small drum kit directly over the snare near the bass drum. And that's it. Good luck with your DIY handheld retrofit. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more.